What would you say is the worst way to go? There are many true disturbing ways to go and for me one of them would be drowning, gasping for air but all you feel filling up your lungs is water. Every gasp is painful and there's nothing you can do as you just wait for it all to end. This is the painfully tragic story of Thomas and Jackie Hawks. Good morning guys and welcome to my channel. Before we begin I would like to give my disclaimer. All my videos are made up of very very public information on the internet. My videos are not meant to disrespect anyone and are for educational purposes only. In this video there are themes of child abuse and murder. Viewer discretion is advised. Let's get into today's case. Thomas and Jackie Hawks were a couple from Prescott, Arizona. Thomas had two sons named Ryan and Matt from a previous marriage but when the marriage failed, Thomas raised his two boys. This was until he met the love of his life, Jackie. When Tom first saw Jackie, he couldn't take his eyes off her. It was love at first sight, and Jackie was just as taken with Thomas. The two wasted no time and soon they were married. Tom's two boys also called Jackie mom because that's how they saw her. They loved her. She was a really great mom to them. When Jackie was 22 years old she was involved in a bad motorcycle accident which basically left her unable to have her own children. And she really wanted to be a mom. So when she had the chance with these boys, she was the best mom she could be. They adored her. Tom and Jackie weren't stinking rich but they saved every extra penny they had and when it came time to retire, they decided they wanted to buy a yacht and just relax on the ocean, living the dream. And that's exactly what they did in the year 2000. They bought a yacht which wasn't in the best condition and named her the well-deserved because that was exactly what she was, well-deserved. Tom and Jackie spent the next few years fixing her up and making her theirs and ready for the open ocean. And when they were ready to set sail, they had this beautiful yacht they would now spend the rest of their days on. They were so proud of their accomplishments. They had the best times on the yacht and recorded most of their journeys. Man, this is scary. I'm gonna go play some more. Okay, be careful, honey. <laughs> Almost got ya. They would always entertain friends and family and they all could see that Tom and Jackie were so happy. They lived like this for three years and in 2004 they became grandparents. One of Tom's sons had a baby. They were over the moon. This was important to them. Especially for Jackie because she never had a baby of her own as Tom's sons were already young boys when they met so she was just so excited for the baby to arrive and when he did, they spent as much time with him as possible. There's Grandpa, holding his old grandboy. They decided that the best thing for them would be to sell the yacht and buy a house in Mexico so they could always be close to their grandchild and see him whenever they wanted in Arizona. So they placed an ad in a boating magazine and it wasn't long till they had a buyer. On November 12, 2004 they set sail for the last time with friends and family to say goodbye and to celebrate new beginnings. This is our last trip to the island because uh, we sold the boat. And we're all having a really good time. Now she's filming us. Hi everybody! Hi Jackie! I'm so glad you could join us on our last voyage on Well Deserved. By November 15th, the day the sale took place, everything just went quiet. Nobody heard from them since and nobody could get hold of them, which was very strange. This was when one of their sons Ryan called Tom's brother Jim Hawks who is retired chief of police for Carlsbad Police Department. Jim headed over to the harbor and there he found the couple's boat and yet no signs of Tom or Jackie. He does however notice that a lot of things are out of place. However, they were selling the boat so maybe the new owners were just messy slobs. So he took out a business card, wrote a message on the back asking the new owners to contact him in regards to Tom and Jackie. It wasn't long after, then a woman called Jim and said that she and her husband had just bought the yacht. 
Jim told her that they're looking for Tom and Jackie. This woman, who introduced herself as Jennifer, said that she also cannot get hold of them. She tells Jim that if he gets hold of them, to please ask them to contact her or her husband because they left some personal things on board that they want to return and also, they needed Tom to explain to them how some of the controls work because they had no idea. They also learned that Tom and Jackie was paid in cash for the yacht. She told them that they probably went to Mexico in their silver Honda because they said something about buying a house down there. So detectives decide to check whether Tom or Jackie deposited a large amount of money into their bank account from the sale of the yacht. And there was nothing. This was alarming as Tom and Jackie were very careful with their finances and they wouldn't just walk around with cash on them. So they decided to take a deeper look at the new buyers, Jennifer and her husband Skylar DeLeon. And almost immediately they found that Skylar had a previous conviction for armed robbery. This was when they decided to go and take another look at the boat. They had no warrant to search the inside of the boat, but a detective saw through one of the windows something that looked like a bloody print inside the yacht, and this was enough for them to break down the door and go inside to have a closer look. Turns out it was just a patch of rust, but upon closer inspection inside they found a receipt for bleach and garbage bags. If you're an old true crime enthusiast like myself, then you know what this means. This was a crime scene cleanup kit. So they checked the receipt details and saw that the items were purchased from Target and they asked to check their cameras, but what they saw on the cameras weren't at all what they were expecting. They were expecting either Jennifer, who was a woman, or Skylar, who was a small, frail-looking character. They knew what he looked like from his previous conviction records. The person they saw was an older gentleman on the hefty side. He was no skinny young frail-looking man. So it turns out the man buying the items was Jennifer's father. Detectives went over to the home of Jennifer and Skylar and there they found her father. He confirmed that he bought the items but Jennifer asked him to as she wanted those items to clean out their new boat. Her father told detectives that they were helping to clean out the church. So detectives head over to the church to speak to Jennifer and Skylar. When they first got there, they initially thought there's no way these two did something to Tom and Jackie. Jennifer was a soft-spoken young woman who just looked like she had everything together. She was there with her husband and her two-year-old daughter and she was heavily pregnant. They both just looked like good people who were helping to clean their local church. But because he was the last person to see them alive, detectives asked Skylar to go down to the station to answer a few questions about Tom and Jackie and he agreed. Before we continue, here's a bit of background about Jennifer and Skylar. Jennifer Henderson grew up in Long Beach, California. Her dad was an accountant and her mom was a stay-at-home mom. They were a simple, nice middle-class family, very close-knit and devout evangelicals. Jennifer was classified as a good girl. When she was 20 still living at home, she decided that she wanted to start a relationship and looked on internet chat rooms for companionship. She then came across the profile of 22-year-old Skylar DeLeon. Skylar also grew up in California although his childhood was the complete opposite of Jennifer's. His dad was a drug dealer and manufacturer and his mom was a heavy drug user. Skylar and his younger brother was constantly being abused and tortured and when they were still very young boys they were put to work because their dad wanted to make money off of them. When he was 14, he actually landed a role in the very popular children's TV show, The Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Everybody on set saw how Skylar's dad yelled at him, telling him he's no good and he should do better. It was so bad that they eventually banned him from set as he was causing Skylar to lose focus. When he was 18 he decided to join the Marines but after only serving about 14 days he went AWOL and ran away to Mexico. And so he was dishonorably discharged. He was actually born as John Julius Jacobson Jr. but changed his name after he left the Marines because he said he didn't want to be associated with his father. Although it later came out that that would not be the reason why he changed his name. You'll see why later. 
He then returned to California. He hopped from job to job struggling to get by. It was around this time that Jennifer saw his profile on a dating site and decided to chat to him. And not long after, they decided to meet up. Jennifer was smitten. He was even better than his profile. He was considered a pathological liar and made up these amazing stories so Jennifer would like him even more. She was said to be easily manipulated by him and his charm. She fell really hard and really fast for him. It was a match made in hell. Even her family fell for his manipulations. They thought that he was this perfect boyfriend. A good guy. A man well deserving of their daughter. They got married in 2003 and decided to then move in together. They turned her parents' garage into a tiny apartment. Very soon after, she fell pregnant and after giving birth, she went back to work at the hair salon and Skylar was a stay-at-home dad. But Jennifer was not happy with their current situation. She wanted a husband who was independent and successful but instead she got somebody who didn't work and just kept borrowing money from her parents. Needless to say, she eventually got fed up and told Skylar he better step up. So Skylar decided to turn to robbery. He tried robbing a man who he thought would have drugs and money on his property. He got caught and was sent to jail for 12 months. Jennifer's father also paid for Skylar to be in the work furlough program, which basically means that certain inmates serving time in jail may leave the facility during the day to attend regular work and return to the institution immediately after work. And by the end of 2004 Jennifer fell pregnant with their second child. This was when Skylar decided he had to do something or lose his family, and he wasn't about to do that. So he decided that he wanted to start his own scuba diving business. He only needed money for diving instruction classes and a boat and a license. And he found the perfect luxury yacht for sale for $500,000. It was perfect. When detectives questioned Skylar about the day he bought the yacht he told them that everything went smoothly. They went out on a sea trial, which is basically taking it out for a test drive, and when they returned to land, Skylar handed Tom the suitcase full of cash and Tom and Jackie got into their silver Honda and left. When detectives asked Skylar if they had mentioned where they were going, Skylar said that they only briefly mentioned that they were moving to Mexico and he doesn't know more than that. Unfortunately for Thomas and Jackie Hawks, this was not at all what happened and they would never make it to Mexico and their friends and family would never see them again. This was what really happened to Thomas and Jackie Hawks. After placing the ad in a magazine selling their yacht, it wouldn't be long until they had a buyer. This buyer was Skylar DeLeon and his wife Jennifer DeLeon. Tom and Jackie were so excited but saddened at the same time. This yacht had been their home. So they invite their close friends and family for one last cruise on the yacht before they handed the keys over the next day. The next morning Skylar and two of his friends, Alonso Machain and John Fitzgerald Kennedy arrived to take a look at the yacht. The only other people present were Tom and Jackie and they were getting ready to do a sea trial, which is basically a test drive for an ocean vessel, but they were nervous as these guys kind of gave off thug vibes. Skylar noticed that Tom and Jackie were on edge and to make them feel more comfortable, he called his wife Jennifer to come over and introduce herself, seeing as she is the wife of the man who would be purchasing their yacht. So after a short while, Jennifer showed up heavily pregnant and with her two-year-old daughter in her arms, she introduced herself and immediately Jackie fell in love with their daughter. As we all know, Jackie just adored children. This ultimately made Tom and Jackie feel more at ease. Surely this man and his wife who is pregnant and their little daughter cannot be criminals. They seem so normal. So they got on board and headed out to sea with Skylar, Alonso and John. Jennifer headed back home as her job was done. Tom and Jackie and these three men sailed far out to sea. Eventually they asked Tom to show them the rest of the yacht and he took Skylar and John down to show them the bedroom area and this is where they overpowered Tom. They brought both Tom and Jackie to the deck where they cuffed them together. They also proceeded to cuff them both to a long chain. And on the other end of this chain was the yacht's anchor. By this time Tom and Jackie knew exactly what their fate would be. They pleaded and cried. But Skylar just stared blankly at them as if he was not about to murder two innocent people. 
Thomas tried to fight as hard as he could and at one point kicked Skylar right on his ass. But there wasn't more that he could have done. Skylar walked over to the anchor, picked it up and struggled to throw this heavy iron anchor overboard. Tom and Jackie sat there looking at this chain getting shorter and shorter knowing what's about to happen. Suddenly the chain yanked them both to the opening on the side of the yacht, bashing Jackie's head on the side of the door. Tom tried his hardest to stop them from going overboard, but eventually he couldn't hold them inside the yacht any longer and they both flew over the side and into the ocean. Before Skylar threw the anchor overboard, he forced them to sign over power of attorney to them. This would ultimately mean the end of Skylar, Alonso Machain, John Kennedy and Jennifer. Yes, Jennifer was also involved in all of it. Skylar and Jennifer was seen on camera at the bank trying to get to all of Tom and Jackie's assets and basically sealing their own fate. After they were arrested, Alonso testified against Skylar, Jennifer and John in exchange for a lighter sentence. Jennifer de Leon got life without the possibility of parole. John Fitzgerald Kennedy was sentenced to death. Alonso Machain got 20 years in prison, and as for Skylar, well things just got a whole lot messier. The real reason for Skylar's greed was not for a better life with his wife and kids. I think that was the last thing on his mind. Turns out, Skylar wanted a sex change. Yes, you heard that right. He wanted to become a woman and was willing to murder to make it a reality. That's the real reason why he changed his name to Skylar when he was 18. And it also turns out that Skylar was also responsible for another murder committed in Mexico one year earlier. This was a man named John Jarvey. He slit his throat and robbed him of $50,000. Turns out Skylar would do whatever he had to to get what he wanted. Skylar was found guilty and also sent to death, but not before getting what he always wanted. In 2019 Skylar's gender was legally changed to female and is now known as Skylar Prochosa de Leon. It's sad that he destroyed so many innocent lives and in the end he still got what he always wanted. It's disgusting. Tom and Jackie did absolutely nothing to deserve what these pieces of shits did to them. We can only hope that their families can eventually heal and find some kind of closure. Jackie's coming today. Got the boat all cleaned up. And I think I'm going to take a shower after I work out and shave my beard. Not a bad beard for 15 days, huh? Ah. Oh. So waiting to see her. This is Captain Tom Hawks and well deserved. Jackie, hello. Hi, honey. I'm so glad to be home. She's home. That's it for this case. Please remember to be safe out there and always be kind. Please subscribe if you haven't yet and give this video a like. If you have a case you would like me to cover, follow the link in the description below to my case request form. Thanks again for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day and I will see you all in my next video.